This story was sent by Joseph Robinson and took place in 2017. He had just moved into his first apartment after moving out of his parents' house. It was an old two-story home built in the 1930s and had been converted to three units, with two downstairs units and one upstairs unit. Joe was in the upstairs unit, which was a decent-sized two-bedroom unit with a large kitchen and a pantry. He lived with his German Shepherd. At the time, only one of the bottom units was rented out, and he knew this because there was a car parked under one of the three spaces in the back of the building. That was the only way he could know someone was there, as they never left the house. And Joe knew this because he worked from home most days and did event photography during the night at a local theater. Throughout the time Joe would be home during the day, he never saw anyone leave the bottom unit, but he knew someone was there because he could hear the sounds of someone walking around and talking. After living there for almost three weeks, Joe started to notice strange things, like rustling in the living room walls and a thumping coming from the guest room. If he left the house, he would come back to find things moved around and sometimes missing. He had the management company change all the locks, but even after this, these strange things would continue. One night, the theater was closed for repairs, so Joe didn't leave the house that night. Joe's brother needed to borrow his car as his was in the shop. The house was about a 10-minute walk from the downtown car garage where his brother had just left his car, so Joe's brother just walked over to borrow his car. The two caught up a bit, and then he took Joe's car to do whatever it was he had to do. Joe stayed inside for the rest of the day and got caught up on some editing he had been putting off. At around 9.30 p.m., he started to hear a voice down the stairs leading to the front door. The way the house was set up, there was a door that led outside a little entryway with a staircase that led to the actual apartment upstairs. This entryway shared a wall with the occupied unit upstairs. So, Joe thought it was just the echo coming from the downstairs neighbor. However, it started to get louder and louder until he could clearly hear what the man was saying. He was arguing with himself and laughing hysterically. He kept telling himself it was time, only to follow up with a loud and aggressive no. Joe started to get a little freaked out and debated calling the police multiple times, but after about 45 minutes, he stopped and everything was quiet again. Feeling uneasy but too tired to stay up, Joe decided to call it a night early. On this night, Joe's dog was with him. She usually would stay at his parents' house when he wasn't home or when he'd leave at night for his photography work. But since he was off that night, she stayed with Joe the whole day. The two got into bed and went to sleep around 11 p.m., and it wasn't until around 4 a.m. that he woke up to the sound of his dog growling. Not a soft growl like when a dog sees a cat. Joe described it as a deep, rough, I'm gonna tear you apart kind of growl. He jumped up and went looking for her, and she was in the kitchen facing the pantry. As Joe rounded the corner, he heard the sound of a door slam in the pantry. However, once he got to the pantry, the door was still open. Joe's dog continued to growl and walked into the pantry and started pushing on the back shelf. Joe went in after her and turned on the light, and he noticed a very small gap between the back shelf and the wall of the pantry, and so he pushed on it, and this revealed a secret room behind the pantry. Joe's dog tried to run inside, but he caught her before she could go too far. There was a small hallway with a drop down at the end of it. Joe didn't go inside though. He called the police immediately. They came and he explained the situation. They went downstairs and got Joe's neighbor to open his door. What they found was disturbing. They found a large hunting knife and a panel missing from a wall in his closet that led to the room in Joe's pantry. The building owner said it was what was left after the renovation that turned the home into three units. Joe moved out that week. Shortly upon moving into their new home, a Utah couple found something that wasn't included on the listing for their home. That might sound exciting, but what they found to them was anything but exciting. The couple stumbled across a hidden room in their house, and it looked exactly like a torture dungeon. The couple found the entryway to this hidden den behind a pretty average looking bookcase in a room that appears to be just an ordinary lounge. The wife slash mother said that the bookcase positioned against the wall looked off, so she decided to try and move it elsewhere, and this was when she soon realized that the bookcase was actually secured on and was disguising a secret door that the couple had no idea existed. The room wasn't included on the listing, nor mentioned by the realtor or the previous owners of the home. The woman shared pictures on Reddit showing the stages of her opening the bookcase before revealing the creepy room lurking behind the wall. 
The image taken relies strictly on the flash from the phone's camera, but it shows the concrete room that contains one random fold-out chair sitting in the middle of the room. Various other objects can be seen around the space that led Reddit users at the time this was posted to speculate that the room could have been used as some kind of torture room, or even used as some kind of bunker for a killer. Of course, Reddit and the internet in general will always come up with wild theories. And while finding this room in your house would definitely be a bit creepy, there's no proof the room was ever used for malicious purposes. The couple later turned the room into a mini gym. However, a much more mysterious Reddit post that was posted four years ago in April of 2019 similarly shows a picture of an entrance to a hidden room in somebody's house. The only difference here is the Redditor who posted this never made a follow-up post or uploaded any pictures of what was beyond the door. The Redditor who shared this found this creepy looking door hidden in his basement and what made it extra weird was that there was a big metal shelf purposefully blockading the door as if to deter anybody from entering. The Redditor claimed it was done so by the previous owner. The post contained no additional info, but what makes this whole thing stranger was that this was the last post to ever be made from this Reddit account. This was a pretty active Reddit account before this post. Because of this sudden disappearance after this already mysterious Reddit post, some people speculated that the person did in fact enter the room and found something in there. Something that may have led to his disappearance or death. People have tried to find out more details about the Redditor to find out where he lived and find any possible news articles relating to disappearances. But there has been no luck. For now, whatever happened here remains unknown. This next one comes from viewer Milad Hussein, who's a father of a teenage girl currently in military school. Recently, Milad had been cleaning out his house with his buddy Jacob, and suddenly out of nowhere, Jacob started yelling for Milad, saying that he found a small hidden door in his daughter's room. Milad had the permission from his daughter to clean her room before doing so. He was shocked to hear the words hidden door, and so he ran to his daughter's room and found Jacob in the closet. There was where Jacob found a secret doorway, which once opened, led to a stairway that led to a basement area that Milad had no idea of. His landlord never told him about it. Milad included this image of the stairs leading to the small basement. Once they got to the basement, they found themselves in a small room with a horrid smell. So horrid, in fact, that the two men considered leaving the basement altogether. Inside the basement was a small table covered in weird dark red stains with a big book, a total of 28 pens which had no ink left, and a mountain of trash with an old laptop on the table. The two men wondered if someone used to live down there a long time ago simply based off how old the laptop was. Milad then decided to look inside the book, and he was heavily disgusted by its contents. There were writings of somebody's plans to brutally slaughter the bullies from school, and he recognized the handwriting to be that of his daughter. One short passage in the book read, Goodbye world, goodbye. There's nothing in this world, I'm useless. I have a Glock in my hand while writing this. I will pull the trigger anytime soon. I'm slowly destroying myself, help me. On another page of the little diary, there was a note that said, I will rip blank into shreds and drown her in her own blood. I have no remorse for what I'm doing. I am aware that I'm going to murder someone who caused me pain and shame for the past nine years. You will regret it. Say hello to my new weapons. The third image from the diary he attached was a diagram of her school and her plan on targeting it and her bullies with her friend who was experiencing the same issues as her. Unfortunately, all the images were pretty blurry. I'd say it's safe to assume Milad confronted his daughter after finding these notes, but I was never able to get confirmation from him as he never replied to any of my emails, unfortunately. This last story comes from a viewer named Sal from Hope Mills, North Carolina. In the summer of 2022, he and his friend Connor moved into an upstairs apartment in a two-family home in town. They didn't sign a lease or anything, it was a listing they found on Facebook Marketplace that offered month-to-month -month rentals. Sal contacted the landlord, Tom, who did not live in the house. There was a tenant already living in the downstairs apartment who drove a red pickup truck that was almost always in the driveway. The upstairs apartment was decent, nothing too modern or fancy, but they saw it as a nice temporary place to escape from their parents' houses. The apartment had two bedrooms, ample closet space, a living room, one bathroom, and a small kitchen. The two bedrooms were on opposite sides of the floor, 
with a long hallway connecting them and the living room in the middle of the hallway. All of the rooms and the hallway were carpeted. There was a big closet in the hallway that would otherwise be used as a jacket closet, but given that they were only going to be there for the summer, they were going to use this as a small storage closet. Right from the get-go, Sal would feel like he'd be hearing noises coming from above the apartment, usually cracks in the wood that he would keep dismissing for normal house noises. But on one of the first nights in the apartment, right above Sal and his bed, he heard what he was almost positive were footsteps. The cracks in the floor were moving, and they were at a steady pace. Sal went over to Connor's room and knocked on the door to ask him if he was hearing the sounds too, but by this point, the cracks stopped. Sal freaked out Connor with this because they were already on the upper level. Anything above them would be the attic, but they were not told of any attic by the landlord. The next day, Sal texted Tom asking if there were an attic, and Tom replied no there wasn't, and that any sounds that would come from above would just be the pipes. So once again, Sal would dismiss the sounds he heard for house noises. The sounds would continue for a few nights. Then one day, after getting home from work, Sal was home alone. Even the downstairs tenant was out. So even in the seemingly empty house, there were clear as day footstep type sounds coming from above Sal's head. He decided to look around the place for a potential attic door. There were no attic doors in either of the bedrooms or living room. He checked the big closet in the hall, and he noticed something peculiar. There was a hanging plastic garbage bag blocking something. He moved it aside to realize there was a white door, and beyond the door was a stairway leading up to another door. Sal quietly went up the stairs and opened the rickety looking wooden door at the top, and what was beyond the door was the last thing he ever expected. There was a cramped, unkempt looking apartment up there. He caught just a glimpse of a small dirty kitchen, a living room with a small old sofa, and an open doorway that led into what he presumed to be a bedroom. Sal stated that it smelt like human waste up there, and the unbearable stench was about to chase him out of there anyway, before he heard cracks in the floor come from inside that small bedroom-looking room. Sal quickly left the floor back down the stairs he came up. He locked himself in his room and called 911. When the police got to the house, Sal let them up the stairs and showed them the secret passageway to the secret upstairs floor, and the police found a homeless-looking and smelling man in a small bedroom on the third floor. When Sal told the landlord, he arrived on scene and came clean, explaining that the man on the third floor was his troubled brother, and he needed a place for him to stay. The third floor that was once an attic was secretly converted to a small living space, but it lacked a bathroom, hence the horrid smell. And according to what the police told Sal, there was human feces in the sink up there. Sal and Connor had only been in that apartment for a few days, but that would have meant at some point that man likely came down into their apartment and may have taken food from them. The landlord was arrested for breaching a number of tenant privacy rights, which even without a lease, month-to-month -month renters are still protected under these laws. Sal and Connor both pressed charges on top of this, and they moved out all of their stuff the same day this happened with the police nearby.